Can I get a good morning over here? Good morning. So who's ready to get social media integrated today? OK. That, that wasn't a very enthusiastic. So how many of you are right now just overwhelmed with social media? You feel it's all over the place. What should I do? Where should I start? Come on, don't be afraid. Raise your hand. OK. So today, I'm going to help you all become social media marketing mavericks and mavens. And I'm really excited to be here. And let me get my clicker. So today, we're going to get very interactive. So I hope you all have your smartphones, if you have your iPads or tablets, if you have a wireless connection, your own connection, I encourage you to use it today. So today we're talking about social media integration at events. And as Richard mentioned, I strive to be the best I could be in this industry. And social media is rapidly evolving every day. So it is very difficult to really stay on top of all the latest trends, but through trial and error and just doing it every day, you could be a maven. So everybody like my new headshot? I just got it done last week. I had to integrate it into the presentation today. So I want you all to pull out your smartphones. And if you're on Twitter or you're on Facebook, just check in to our Sandbox conference today. And I really want you to tag me as well. That's my handle, Event Marketing Maven. Let me go back. And just like all of you, and we're going to go back to my handle in a moment, but just like all of you, I love events. I, I also love being here. I love doing social media while we're at events. And we're really going to dive into content strategy today and talk about how do you incorporate social media at your events and for your company strategically to get results. So we're going to check in. And if you have Foursquare installed on your mobile device, you could use Foursquare. And you would just check in to the Rose and Shingle Creek. And you can definitely hashtag the conference at Sandbox 2013. And I'd love for you to also tag me up, because I'm going to get that alert momentarily. And you're going to be exposed on the big screen. And if you're not familiar with Foursquare, Foursquare is a great tool to have your attendees check into the event. And Foursquare has over 25 million users and 1 million businesses hooked into it. So even Rose and Shingle Creek has a Foursquare presence. And that allows you to check into this location and tag that appropriately. And I've provided some examples because I know sometimes we might be at a loss for what should I say or what should I do when I check in. So I've given you some ideas as far as updates. One of them is getting my social media fix with Event Marketing Maven Sandbox 2013. And I did a little creative hashtag for this session. So some of these are just best practices and different ideas for you to check in. I'm just giving you a moment to all do it. Yes, you could download it. And I recommend downloading it when you're either at home or have access to Wi-Fi, because it takes a lot of bandwidth to download it. But you can also check in on Facebook. Facebook, of course, had to integrate a similar feature on their network. So if you check in on Facebook, we'll be able to see your activity as Facebook just incorporated hashtags into their mix. So it works as the same functionality if you decide to go on Facebook and check in. 
you cannot check in on the Twitter native app. So if you're going to Twitter, you would just have to write, I'm at Sandbox 2013 and do it that way. So if you're not familiar with hashtags, hashtags are an amazing tool to really track your attendees' engagement. And the team at ChefBird, they incorporated their hashtag at Sandbox 2013. And now we're going to go into demo mode. And I'm going to toggle onto my phone. And we're going to see how this actually works. So for those of you who have checked in, I will be shouting you out right now. So first, we're going to go to Twitter. And I'm going to check who. So this is one of my updates that I just, ignore that text, please. <laughs> so this is one that I just updated while Richard was speaking. And I'm going to click onto the hashtag, and we're going to see all the activity. Laura Helm, where are you at? Love it. Lauren Bauer. Whoa. Who's the cute shorty? Oh, you're a cute shorty. Crus Krusky. Who's Krusky? Oh. Now we're going to view a oh. Tommy Hart, like that, starting off with a big bang. Rachel? She's not here. She's here in spirit. <laughs> ASP, Melissa, representing. Richard, that was your tweet from last night. OK, great. So now we're going to toggle to Facebook. And you, and you see how this works. You could really track who's engaged in the conversation, what people are doing. And I'm revealing myself here on Facebook, so full, full frontal of all my feed. OK. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Cute family photo. Oh, that's your friend request. All right, I'll, we'll, we'll hook up. All right, so as you can see, I checked in here this morning using Foursquare. And we're going to click on the sandbox hashtag. Tommy, great activity there. That's it? Come on. Yes. That would be, you have an iPhone? Android, that would be your Android store password. Usually when you download an app, you have to type in your password after you downloaded the app. All right, let's try to do that again. Maybe that might be it, but well, Facebook is not as savvy as Twitter. In a couple weeks, this didn't even work until you got until you upgraded the the update. So that's some just cool little interactive tidbits. And now that you mentioned that, I'm going to have to take that up with Facebook, because that's not a very user-friendly function that you could gauge that conversation. So we're going to switch back to the presentation, and we're going to get interactive later on. And I hope everybody did 
check in. So strategy does start with your hashtag. So in order to gauge those conversations and track those conversations and activity, you really need to incorporate that hashtag at your conference. Now, how many of you in the past year or so have integrated a hashtag at your conference? Raise your hand. And did you track the conversations off of the hashtag? And for those who have, what was your experience? Did you do any pre-promotions using the hashtags yes. to the attendees and such? So the exhibitors were using it more for a platform for a promotion and sales, but yet the attendees weren't engaging. And based on your research, were the attendees social media savvy, or are they just? OK. Oh, OK. So baby steps. So everyone, you know we have a conference app for Sandbox 2013. How many of you have downloaded the app? and are actively using it. OK, great. And we're going to go into that shortly to see how the, that app integrates with all this social media activity. So as I mentioned, hashtags serve the purpose of tracking, integrating those contests, like you mentioned, and that instant feedback. So as soon as day one of your conference is over, you could immediately track that conversation. And I know, as we saw, Facebook hasn't fully delved with the privacy issues in order to track that. But if your attendees are integrated on Twitter, you'll be able to gain that instant feedback. So what we're going to talk about in the next 60 minutes or less is what's your content strategy? And I'm not going to talk about how to use social media, because the bottom line is, what are you talking about? Content is king, and we have to be able to use it strategically. We're also going to talk about the best social tools to use at your event, engagement and social media contest ideas, as well as cool decor and technology integration. So when you first delve into a social media plan for your conference, you really have to think about the end goal and what you want out of it. So I know we just discussed this. How many of you are utilizing all of these networks? Just by a real quick show of hands. Facebook, Foursquare, now? Twitter, okay, Pinterest, I love Pinterest, Instagram, and Instagram is a rising star and it really captures a lot of the cool features of your event and also works very well with the Twitter integration. So, okay, everybody says this, I'm on all these social media networks, now what? What's the next step? So how many of you actually have a social media plan? OK, that's great. And do you feel you're using it right? Do you feel you're paying heed, you're disciplined about it, and it's, it's reaping some rewards? Not many, but some. OK. Now, how many of you feel like this is your approach? Like throwing spaghetti on the wall and hoping it sticks. I love that picture. So content strategy. We go back to content. Content is king. So when you're developing these social media strategies, it should be around this content 
path. So when you have your content strategy together, you should mix it up. Mix it up with some scheduled posts and don't be afraid to shelf your tweets because you don't want to waste your time in that social media rabbit hole and do it manually or do it when you feel like it. Just sit down and map out your week, map out your month, and, and feel free to schedule shelf tweets. It works. Live posts. So while you're at the event or at special functions or you're doing a site visit, give your attendees a little teaser. You know, we're here at the Rosen Shingle Creek. We're scheduled to do our 2015 program here. Check out the cool amenities. And also be sure to tag Rosen because then they'll be on your radar. You'll be on their radar. Live engagement. So you set up your Facebook, you set up your Twitter, and now you're starting to see people engage back with you. Don't forget about them. Comment back to them. Tag them back. You know, there are a lot of cool do-it-yourself webinars on how to do all this stuff, so don't be afraid. Just dive right deep into it. You know, social media now is that immediate customer service, and it's up to us to reply to those folks. You know, they're engaging with us, so we got to make it count. Now, we talk about different content ideas. So you're at your conference or you're building your social media plan for your company. You know, what does that content look like? So some of the ideas that I jotted down here are, you know, those shelf tweets. Put together your scheduled activities and hype those up. Your entertainment, if you have some special acts coming in, you know, get some information on all their cool features about those acts and entertainers. Like you mentioned, check-in specials. If you are using Foursquare, even Facebook, you could activate these different check-in specials that when your attendees check in, they get a free you know, memory stick from ePro Direct. So just different aspects that you can in involve and incorporate to, to get your attendees excited and get them engaged. Speakers. So if I'm up here, I'm going to give Richard and the Shepherd team different facts about me so they can include that in some of their pre-promotion tweets or did you know facts. Transportation, if your event is pretty involved and complex and you have different transportation at certain events, you might want to include that in your content strategy. And app promotions. If you invest in the money for an app for your conference, be sure to promote that app because you don't want it to be a waste of your time and resources. You want your attendees to use the app. Cultivating content. So we talked about some shelved content strategy ideas. Now let's talk about just harvesting that content and how do we get it. Ask for the content. You're paying this blockbuster headliner entertainer get their bio, get some fun facts from them, and just translate that into your social media content. Ask it from your sponsors. I was recently working with a client, and at their conference, the conference organizers asked the sponsors to draft as many tweets, and the conference actually tweeted those content from each sponsor. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you and your team have to do the work. Ask your sponsors to do the work for you and give them and, and say, with 140 characters or less, please provide me what you're going to be doing, what you're going to be exhibiting, what cool new features that you want to promote. And, and they'll see that value. And they'll be grateful. And they'll see that you're tweeting them and you're doing all this cool stuff for your conference. Intendi, uh, social media contests. I know we talked about that, and we're going to get into that further in the presentation, just about some ideas with Facebook, Pinterest, and how you could incorporate some cool social media contests. Hashtags. Again, I stress it. you got to do it. It's going to be your measurement tool. And daily event recaps. So at the end of day one, 
if you have your social media boots to the ground person capturing photos throughout the whole conference, you might want to download with them at the end of the day of that conference, day number one, and upload those images to Facebook and, and mark that album day one of the conference. We experience cool new tricks, cool new speakers, check it out, tag those people so it goes into their streams and you get that added visibility. Video. Again, I, as I mentioned, you could have a boots to the ground social media reporter and I do encourage that, but also get you know, some video or even in prompt, like, how are you enjoying the conference? You know, how's your experience, Richard? Oh, how are you doing, Tommy? And really get your attendees engaged and involved. Everybody likes to see, not everybody, but everybody likes to see themselves on, you know, on the big screen. And, and you could even incorporate that as a recap at the end of your conference, like all the outtakes and cool features that we saw throughout the conference. So just different ideas to include. So now we have all these ideas. How do we organize them? What is the daily plan and how do we get started? So what I do is I start with a calendar. And this is, it, this is totally a mocked up calendar, but basically I break it down by a whole month. And this is a basic one. You could really get intense with an Excel-driven one that says LinkedIn network, Facebook, because you might want to vary your content on the different networks depending on where the audience demographic is. But you could start basic so you don't get overwhelmed and basically put together a whole monthly calendar and outline the different posts that you want to include on Monday, what you want to include on Tuesday. In this case, this is developed for a multi-day conference where you want to have post one in the morning, post two, then you got midday, evening, and this is like a four-day event. So you might want to do one for your event and you might want to do one just for your own internal company efforts. So this is just a good starting point. And if you want to get more deeper and separate and differentiate your content, that's a different conversation that we would have to take offline. So on-the-go updates. So why do we want to do these live on-the-go updates? Instant coverage, like I said, people engage with photos, with videos, and they like to see it as it's happening. So on-the-go updates are very important for the success of your event. And as I mentioned, photos are the most engaging pieces of content. And people share them, and they get engaged. And it's just very important that you incorporate that into your mix. Now, how many of you are doing these on-the-go updates? And are you using any tools or you're just doing it manually? How many of you use tools to manage your social media? OK. So one of the tools, one of the tools that's widely used in the industry is Hootsuite. And this is a free platform. There are upgraded plans for very inexpensive. The next upgraded plan is like $10 a month. And this will really help centralize your efforts, and you could even post on LinkedIn through Hootsuite. That's the only network that you can do that right now. I know there are some upgraded packages and other resources that help you with this. I know HubSpot has its own social media management tool. Some of the more advanced enterprise softwares have their own social media management tools, but these are the most popular ones that you could use at literally no cost. Buffer app is my favorite. It's the one that I use. It's, it's very user friendly, very simple, very clean. I use the upgraded plan. You can integrate a lot of different accounts. And this one uses LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Hootsuite, 
I'll correct myself. Hootsuite is the only management tool that actually lets you post into LinkedIn groups. So if you want to do some more promotional initiatives, Hootsuite is a great tool. I actually use both just because Hootsuite allows you to do the group posting so you don't have to go into LinkedIn manually and post to every group. Facebook Pages app. Now, Facebook, as you can imagine, has its own algorithms that they say if you use a social media management tool like Buffer or Hootsuite that your posts don't get as much visibility as if you use the Facebook native apps. So if you want to toggle and use both, I know it's a pain in the butt, but I recommend that you do use both. So if you have a fabulous photo that you want to get out to the masses, use the Facebook Pages app. Sendable is another option. It's a little more pricey, but it's an, another great social media management tool that you might want to look into. So I gave you a couple different options because, again, the functionality differs from each management tool. I went back. Excuse the Mac to PC hiccup there. So how many of you are familiar with Storify? OK. Storify is a really cool platform. It's like an aggregator that will actually, if you plug in your conference hashtag, Storify.com, you'll be able to see all the activity. So you saw when I pulled up my Twitter on my phone, it was very limited to the activity that I could see. So on Twitter, I was able to see more. On Facebook, I wasn't able to see much. But using this tool, you could actually see every single photo and live engagement from your conference. And that's why they call it Storify. It's a social media storytelling platform, and it's really cool. And at this conference, my photo traveling to the conference was the second photo that appeared in the stream. So you want to take that note down. And we're going to create a Storify once the conference for Sandbox is done. So I totally encourage you all to be taking photos throughout the conference, I saw some of you taking photos of the food at last night's dinner. I hope you hashtag that. And as far as social media contests, I know some of you want to get involved with Pinterest and incorporate that into your mix. And here are a couple of ideas to create a Pinterest-driven contest. And you've probably seen the pin it to win it. That's a great idea. Of course, you want to make your prize attractive. In this situation, they actually said, you know, pin on our board your favorite travel locations for your chance to win an all-inclusive vacation. I also thought this campaign was really cool. They incorporated the 4th of July holiday into their campaign. And all of these slides will be available via SlideShare after the conference is done. And Shepard will get you that as a recap. So you can check these out more closely. Facebook. Now, Facebook has a couple different cool apps that will help you integrate your contest. Because I know some of you might feel hesitant, like, oh, am I supposed to just randomly write down all these people that entered my contest and pull it out of the hat? There are actually tools to help you randomly pull winners from these contests. And one of them is, the one that I use is Big Like CO. They make it very easy to incorporate a Facebook app and then pull a winner at random. I totally forgot which company this one is. But there are a lot of different tools that could help you integrate your Facebook contests. And again, you're encouraging your attendees to share 
you know, whether it's a crazy face contest or why they love your conference. So with the New York City, I, which I thought was a great campaign, they just created the hashtag, I love NYC, and encouraged their users to share different photos of their favorite places in New York. Tab site, there you go. So tab site's another tool that could help you integrate Facebook contest promotions. Twitter. KFC did this really great contest for Twitter and they reached out to their social network and asked why should we give you a scholarship? So tweet, you know, ask the colonel why you need a college scholarship. And this girl, Amanda, actually was the winner of the contest. And her tweet was just, hey, Colonel, your scholarship's the secret ingredient missing from my success. Got the grades, just need the cash. So just different ideas. You might want to incorporate this in some of your pre-promotion strategy to win you know, a free conference registration to your next event. So just different ideas and creative hashtag submissions. Now, before you even think about having a social media contest, you got to think about your strategy and the purpose behind the contest. So if you know your conference attendees are on Facebook, you might want to just do the contest on Facebook. If you know they're engaging on Twitter, you might want to just do it on Twitter. So you really have to know what social media your attendees and your target audience is on. And what is your purpose? You know, do you want to incorporate one of your sponsors into the mix of the giveaway? You know, who do you want to reach? Will this contest span all of the networks? That's being a little bold, but you might want to consider that. And what's your promotional strategy? Like I talked about, you have to be promoting this up until your conference because you just don't want to spring it on them. So be, be sure to incorporate it in some of your pre-promotions. And like I said, tap into industry partners and influencers to help spread the message. So you might want to ask one of your speakers to retweet it to their network or just different influential people in the industry that you might want to target to get the word out. Now, to put this in perspective, I wanted to show you one of my clients and what we just recently did and how we incorporated social media and a mix of other online marketing to yield a successful registration effort. So this is my client, Event Leadership Institute, and I might have mentioned it to a couple of people last night at dinner, and they are a online learning institution that taps into industry leaders and provides different education for planners that are either mid-career, just starting out, and they provide just different resources like how to read an event insurance contract. So, and I know that could be overwhelming, but just different courses on lighting, production, AV, how to plan a fashion show, and these are just different online demand, on-demand classes. And what we did was we launched a new class that's a six to eight week course. And we launched it at the end of July. And we utilized all our social media networks along with some other techniques. And the class is directed towards maybe planners like yourself who are thinking about starting your own event company. And the class is called the Launching Pad. And what we did to kick off the educational classes, because they cost $495 for Early Bird, what we did was we created a free preview event. It was just an online webinar where we're previewing the event, or in your case, conference, to get people excited and to understand the investment value because conferences are a lot of money. So what makes your attendees want to attend your conference? 
So what we did was we did a series of promotional tweets. Of course, we also mixed it into our regular content. So just because you're doing an event doesn't mean you need to halt all your other regularly scheduled tweets. So don't forget about them. Keep that going because you want to mix it up. So what we did was we scheduled a bunch of different tweets promoting this free preview. And we did it in literally two weeks. And we garnered over 100 attendees on the live GoToMeeting webinar. We also have been incorporating AdWords. So utilizing AdWords, you might discount it, but it's a very valuable tool. And definitely consult with a marketing expert on how to craft your keywords, because it is a little intensive. So you might want to tap into a Google certified marketing expert. And if you need a recommendation, I could give you one. Not me, but there are Google certified experts out there that could help you with this process. And we also incorporated affiliate email marketing. So if you, in your industry, have different industry magazines, you might want to reach out to them and see what you could trade out or partner up on so you can send out your message to their list of subscribers and promote that. And this particular email blast went to Event Solutions Magazine. And I know some of them offer paid opportunities like this if you can't negotiate a co-op deal. But it's, it's very useful, and you'll, it'll garner a lot of results. And we also hooked up with another industry magazine and did another co-op promotion, successful meetings. And we promoted it on that network as well. And the other thing is, You've heard about the success of blogging. It really works. And all of you are experts at what you do. And magazines and different trade publications are dying for people to submit content and your unique perspective on what you do and your business. And instead of just blatantly promoting your conference, Think about the topics and fundamentals that surround your conference and create a blog and submit it to one of your related industry magazines. And then at the end, you could plug your conference. So these are just different techniques that will definitely garner the success that you're looking for. And again, we are very much in bed with BizBash Magazine, and we also have a co-op event with them. So our live event that we sponsor workshop series is with this magazine. So this is just another way you could partner or propose something or even buy advertising from those magazines to tap into those subscribers. And this is just an example of those live pics that you want to get and capture while the event is happening. And like I mentioned earlier, to get that content and information from your speakers. So we just popped in some different content about different speakers and instructors and, and put it in 140 characters or less and really transition the message to that educational value for your attendees so they know what to expect and what to look forward to. And trust me, these will definitely be retweeted. So for example, in our network, I just screenshotted some of our activity and engagement. And the way that you want to promote your conference is more with specific call to actions that Ask people questions like, you know, what are you waiting for? Don't wait any longer. Sign up for the early bird registration. You know, last call. So just different call to actions to make them feel like, oh, I got to register for that conference now. I don't want to miss out on that extra savings. And again, tag your different industry hashtags. So in your industry, you might have 
you know, retailers association, it might be retail, pound retail. Make sure you're hashtagging those in your strategy and in your tweets to get that extra exposure in that market. And the results. We literally launched this campaign July 30th. We had the free preview August 5th with 100 attendees. And our early bird registration was deadlined this past Monday. And we got 50 registrations. Just by the combination of using those shelf tweets and some of this affiliate marketing, AdWords, and getting really creative and, and really putting it out there. And as the analytics show, you know, we got over 14,000 page views in the week from July 22nd to August 9th, and our tweets just went through the roof. So be sure when you're measuring all your efforts that you have your Google Analytics set up and that you're monitoring the activity. Now to the fun part. I love event design and I love all these cool new technology tools that you see around us. And I put together a list of different cool ideas that you can incorporate into your event iPad tabletops, how cool is that? Video walls. So if your attendees are engaged with Twitter, with, I know Vine is very new. I struggle to do it religiously and it doesn't really happen. But incorporating some of these videos and tweets, you could have it in the background on your screens and really getting people engaged and involved in the conference is, is so unbelievable. Um, charging stations, you see them throughout the perimeter of the room, even this cool branded one, and Shepard could provide you with all of these resources to get your attendees mobile, recharged, so all these efforts aren't in vain because you're asking them to use their cell phones you might want to have charging stations throughout your event so they don't break down. And there's even these cool little lounges that you could use at your events, at the reception parties with the LED lighting and the recharging areas. You can't even tell that little lounge area has a recharging station, it's so cool. And if you want to incorporate those engagement contests, be sure to put some reminders around your event on how they could do it. Because, you know, toggling back to the event app, I'll forget, you'll probably forget. And just having these little reminders are really cool to incorporate into your event. And if you are having that grand finale or having this real dual cool stage, you could even integrate the Twitter walls. And when you incorporate this technology, just keep in mind you can monitor the conversations. So there won't be any rogue tweeters saying like, I hate this event. All of that will be monitored. And you can ask Shepard about more of these really cool tools and incorporating you know, some of your sponsors' logos into the Twitter walls because that might be the way that you get it paid for. But it's really cool technology and it really gets those attendees engaged and seeing their names in, in the bright lights. And here's some other examples that you could incorporate a full bleed of a branded Twitter wall. And that, and again, your hashtag and highlighting that attendee, which is really cool. Photo booths, you've seen them all and they're getting more and more sophisticated every single day. Now they have Instagram photo booths, Twitter photo booths, and all of these are integrated to take your photo and then snap it to the social media platform. Just many cool ideas and you could even brand them if you don't want it branded with the social media network you could have it branded with a sponsor so some great ideas to incorporate your sponsors and give them more value back at your conference 
And they also have the printing station option where you can actually give your attendees those instant photos as they're taking it and also transmit it to their social networks. And there's so many different platforms out there and you might want to talk to your Shepherd account executive to learn which one is right for you and your company and your needs based on dimensions and size and all that. Check-ins and activations. Now, I know throughout this session, I've told you, ask your attendees to check in. Ask them, ask them. But if they're not savvy or they don't do that type of thing, you might want to integrate the latest technology to get it to be just automatic. Now, we talked about check-in specials, and this, again, is more of the manual approach, but you could just set up those different specials on Foursquare and Twitter and, and promote that different aspect. And there are some tools that could help you integrate that as well. And as you could see in these screenshots, this just shows you you could actually tear out your special offers. So you could have special offer for check-in one, special offer for your first time registration or your first time attendee, you could have multiple check-in specials. So if they, you know, adding that gamification aspect. So if they check into the conference more than three times, you might want to reward them. So at least they're getting, you know, honored for what they're doing. And it's not in vain. And these are the different ways you can add that gamification element. And it takes a little savvy and prowess on Foursquare. You have to really dive into it to activate these different badges and set them up for your conference. Now, for those attendees that are just not going to check in, they're not going to do it, they don't even realize what social media is, you could still get them involved. And this happens kind of on the front end of the registration. You're going to ask them for all their social media handles. And whether or not they use it, if you integrate the RFID technology, when they enter into this social media session, their RFD, RFID technology is built into their badge. And they enter into this, this session, and their check-in is updated. And you're setting this all up with your Shepherd account executive, what you want to say, the content. So everything is pre-done. And those attendees that may not be social media savvy are checking in without even knowing it. And they're sharing the experience. And there are different ways you could incorporate this RFID technology. You could even do ones that check in take their photo, so you can integrate that photo booth technology into your RFID. And this is all cool technology that I love. I'm passionate about this stuff. And there's other ways you could incorporate social media in that automated approach. You could set up different Facebook check-in points and Shepard has vendors and preferred partners that could help you do that. And you could also set up challenge bars. So if you're having that exhibit hall, you might want to even incorporate like different trivia that incorporates your sponsors, that incorporates your conference. So it's a full 360 experience. And I don't know if some of you have seen those other cool tricks on the iPad or on the, the touch LED screens where you could actually do a wheel of fortune. Like you could spin the wheel and then they get the prize. So those are just really cool new methods of integrating the social media through different activations and contests. So if everybody could just open up their sandbox app really quickly. And another cool thing to do if you are incorporating an app for your conference, do a how-to session 
at the start of your conference to get your attendees familiarized with how to use the app, the different functionalities. So you're really getting that extended value from your apps. So let's check out what's the new alert. Now, how many of you got this alert for breakfast time? Was it helpful? It reminded you. It probably woke you up. And then let's go to the social networking. Shepherd Twitter. Let's see what the Shepherd Twitter team is doing here. Oh, I have to sign in. Okay, that's taking too long. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And, and as you can see with the app, you have the opportunity to give your sponsors some more mileage and getting them to do some banner ads and, and really get involved with that perspective. Okay. Toggle back. Now to recap our session this morning, it boils down to these five elements. Strategy, content curation, engagement, and utilizing some of those solutions to simplify and ease the process. All right, please be gentle. Questions, comments, remarks? Sorry, what would be the best um, combination when you're creating a hashtag? What do you think is a key thing to consider? Well, first, you definitely want to go on Twitter and check out if there is an existing hashtag of what you're thinking about using. That would be the first step. The second step would be, and I know a lot of styles differ. I know some people just use 13 as the year or 2013, and you really do want to keep it Simple, keep, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Keep, keep, keep it sweet and simple. But really incorporating the name of the conference, I know people just use like the initials. And I think that's the most effective way, but as long as you're promoting it throughout your collateral, you know, just keep it simple and short, but make sure you're promoting it throughout your marketing collateral so people remember it. Exactly. Right. Thank you, Tommy. If everyone can just please wait till we get a microphone to you, just raise your hand, and when you're ready, that way everyone can hear your question. Thanks. Great presentation. Um, real quick, the photo booths that you showed for Instagram and I think it was Twitter. Mm -hmm. Are those, where do you find those? Is that through Instagram or is there other suppliers? Well, Shepard can definitely assist you with the process in getting, because there's so many different manufacturers that are producing these specialty booths, but your Shepard rep can definitely assist you with that process. Uh, check out Jeff. He'll be back here in the back of the they provide a photo booth. 
And I personally have worked with A to Z, and they are amazing. They're a very flawless operation. They have an awesome little iPhone emulated screen, and really, their photo booth is, is really seamless. Hi, I have two questions. Uh, the first is, can you talk a little bit about the shelving of tweets and mm -hmm. how you can kind of auto-tweet? That's something that we are struggling with on site. We're so busy. Mm -hmm. And having, you know, some sort of tweets in your back pocket to sort of fill Definitely. the dead space would be really helpful. So if you could talk about that. And then the second question is, how do you maintain um, a presence in social media, and then how do you maintain your personal presence as a friend or with family? You know, I have exhibitors who might want to friend me on Facebook, and Facebook is more of my personal side mm -hmm. as opposed to my Twitter or my LinkedIn account. So how do I be friendly and approachable online, but maintain sort of my separate identity? Okay. I'll address your shelf tweets, and then we'll talk about the differentiation of profiles. With shelf tweets, so it's the week or even two weeks before your conference. Sit down, look at your schedule, look at what's in store, and literally start, shelf, start writing tweets. Just again, those call to actions, short and simple, and mix it up. I know what, what our team does is we basically kind of silo them out per promotion. So we're not writing everything all mixed up. Like we're focusing on one piece of content first and then we're writing about 15 to 30 tweets surrounding that specific promotion. And then we're going to the next. And that's why I said when you're involving your sponsors, you definitely want to put that call to action to them saying, so what are you doing at our trade show floor booth? Or, or what are you sponsoring? Or what products are you promoting? And we request that you give us 15 tweets. And then you could pack that into your plan. And then, of course, using that social media management tool and creating those posting times per your schedule. So the best way to do it is to silo out that information. Would Hootsuite be the tool that you would use to, or some? is there a tool like that to use to sort of pre-schedule them? Yes, so Hootsuite okay. is that tool, and it's just up to you whether you prefer Hootsuite. I personally prefer Buffer App, and I suggest you look into that one just because it's just more simple and clean, and you could even move around the tweets. You could do that in Hootsuite, but I, I don't like the dashboard of Hootsuite, but if you are targeting a lot of people on LinkedIn and the LinkedIn groups, you're going to want to do Hootsuite. And then as far as the differentiation of profiles, what a lot of people do is they, and you've seen this, they create a Twitter handle or a Facebook profile that is your company, like your name, your company, or, you know, Kristen at Shepherd. So you can keep them separate. Some people prefer the transparency. I prefer the transparency because I want you to get to know me as a person. I really don't have anything to hide. And I want you to know that I have two kids or what I do. Because, you know, we talked about this last night. People don't like to be sold to. They want to get to know you. And to me, when somebody stalks me and gets to know me, it, it shows that they did their homework about me. And that, that's impressive. It's a little scary, but impressive. You know, Buffer has a great uh, companion tool that if you're prior to your conference and if you're an association or whomever, um, who's ever in your feed, it analyzes your feed to see when they're most active, and then you can post your tweets at that time. Right. So that way you'll get the most bang for your buck when people are actually watching them. Right, and you can craft your timing because with these social media management tools, you will have to set the posting times. So utilizing that trick that Tommy just mentioned is a good way to gauge that activity and capture their attention. One more thing, with, um, with ePro Meeting Apps, we provide a bunch of pre-written tweets that all you have to do is fill in your hashtag and your handle. So that way, if you can't think of stuff to say, we have 50 different things for you to say ahead of time. I mean, most people in this room know what to say, but you know. <laughs> 
Over here. Last year, I tried um, a, an app um, called Lanyard for trade shows. Okay, yep, I'm familiar shows. with it, yep. I had a hard time getting anybody else to use it, but I found it was a really neat way to get out your conference schedule and everything through Foursquare. Do you have any experiences on how to make it more user-friendly or to get your people to use it? I noticed a lot of the Europeans used Lanyard, and a European friend actually put me onto it. And I love it as well. But again, it's about kind of incorporating that into your pre-promotion strategy so people know it exists. And even, like we said, shelving different tweets, like check out the, the preview schedule on Lanyard, get involved, and, and just repetition, repetition, repetition. But again, mixing it in with your regularly scheduled tweets, for sure. I, I am the least qualified person in this room to comment on social media, but we do have somebody at the association who works very closely with our industry partners. And just to comment, what I've seen them do and what I've heard them say in the various meetings I've been involved in, we are a, we're a celebrity-driven industry, and, and so uh, many of our manufacturers and now the association itself is working on putting together specific messaging uh, and timetables so that not only is the messaging coming from the association, but the whole network of celebrities who are affiliated with our association and our industry are all on the same page and they're all tweeting the, roughly the same messaging, but it's going out to all of their different there. individual networks. And it allows you to retweet that message from your association page, which is powerful. And this is what we talked about with influencer marketing, you know, tapping into those influencers in your industry to really amplify your message. Thank you, that was great. Anyone else? Come on, don't be scared. I have a very basic question. <laughs> um, Facebook and LinkedIn, I get it. I get why you join it. Mm -hmm. I understand what to do with it. I have no earthly idea why I would do anything on Twitter. So for people that are still trying to figure this all out, and if I'm asked that question, what, why would you tell someone to join Twitter, and what is the benefit to it? So with Twitter, as we saw in our interactive demonstration, it's open ground. You know, with Facebook, there are so many privacy settings, there's so many parameters that limit you that exposure and that engagement, and they keep changing their policies. So it's making it harder and harder to really amplify your message on Facebook. Because Facebook is very challenging to gather, you know, your followers and your fans on your, on your business pages. But with Twitter, you really could connect with anyone and really tag them. So if you're prospecting a specific client, and I did this myself, you know, I admire the social media integration that USA Network, I don't know how many of you are like TV fanatics, but I love watching TV and USA Network's one of my favorite networks and they do social media awesome. So I just kind of just hashtag the show and I saw that the VP of digital strategy is very active on Twitter. And I actually followed him and tagged him and complimented him. So using Twitter gives you amazing access to people that you would normally not be able to reach if they are savvy on social media. So it gives you this new approach and way to find people that you wouldn't be able to access before. And that's just my one promotion for Twitter and why you should be using it. So it's just more open and like we saw, you're able to really gauge your hashtags in a wider space.
Right. Right. So again, that goes back to your brand's voice. So you might not want to throw that smiley face in if your target customers are suit and tie folks. So you want to be very mindful of the way your brand voice speaks, and that's how you want to tailor your communication on social media. Now, you will run into those situations where you have to write a two or a you, just the you, because you're running out of characters. And that is OK, because you, know, you have just so much space to say what you got to say. So that is industry standard if you want to abbreviate. And that, therefore, becomes into that line of improper grammar. So that is OK, Richard. If you want to tone it down and not be so jokey, depending on your brand voice, then I encourage doing that. But as far as you know, the jargon and, and protocol for Twitter, it, it varies. It just depends on you and how you use it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So here's what I struggle with. I have a membership organization, and members pay us money to be a, a part of it. So with social media, I lose that engagement, direct engagement, that mm -hmm. I try to foster one-on-one -on -one with my members. Right. I mean, how do I play in both worlds right. and not lose that touch with the membership? So again, it goes back to the conversation. Is your membership social media integrated? And if they are, it takes a lot of homework to really tag like your member. He lost his mic. He still, he lost his mic. <laughs> Let me follow up on that though, because if they are going to engage on Twitter mm -hmm. or Facebook or LinkedIn, then why do, why do they need the organization? Why do they need to pay me money? to be a member of the organization, if they can engage and network, which is what we sell as mm -hmm. a, you know, probably the, the uh, I like to say we're selling air, but uh, networking is the primary product that we sell. If well, they can do that and no, outside and nothing, our- Nothing beats face-to-face -face networking. I mean, never, ever, ever, no matter what we're doing on social media, social media is just, it's replacing email. It's just another form to communicate with them. And as far as being a member and sticking with their membership, membership to any professional association gives you that credibility and, it, and, and your prestigious organization. They can't get their next job at XYZ company unless they have these credentials or they're a member of this organization. You're just using social media as another communication tool to either thank them, give them credit, you know, praise them for an accomplishment. I understand, but and and um, how can I do that though internally without having to go, as as we discussed at breakfast mm -hmm. this morning? I mean, right. we've got a public facing and an internal facing issue. Um, with the group well, I work uh, with and, and specifically. On and on Twitter, you can protect your tweets. So you can only accept certain people into your stream if you want to kind of silo and keep it private. And even on LinkedIn, create groups that only members are allowed into. So not some you know, Joe Schmo can come into your LinkedIn group. They have to be a member of your group. But if you create these LinkedIn groups, you have to have valuable content to drive them to join the group. So it's, it's layered with, with strategy, definitely, for sure. I hope I answered your question. It, you kind of go into a realm that is, is very detailed and don't get frustrated. Don't get frustrated. Never give up. 
Yeah, hi. Um, this is kind of in the long lines of uh, Kevin's question, and it, it's uh, talking about Twitter walls. Right. Why would I want to do that? I go to all these events and I see these Twitter walls. And it's like, who cares what all these people are saying about this other event? I mean, I don't care. Now, I understand as an organizer, right. getting the feedback to me is awesome. So I, I love being able to read what people are saying about our event during our event. Great. But why would I put it up on big walls and screens all over the place? Nobody, I, don't, I don't see how anybody would ever care. Well, some people look at it as decor. You could look at it at that perspective, but... There's less expensive ways to decorate, you know. <laughs> well, touche. But I guess it all boils down to preference and what your attendees like. I, I mean, I know you may not like it. I personally like it. I think it's cool. It, it, uh, everything on Twitter, just uh, twi Twitter. Twitter, <laughs> yeah, that shows you where I'm at. Uh, <laughs> it just, I don't care about a lot of things. And the things I care about, I, I read, but, you know. Melissa? Yeah. So I think if you have a wall of random tweets spouting out, yeah, no one's interested in that. Right. You're right. Um, but what you can do with Twitter is facilitate really good chats. So I know that I joined some chats that have certain hashtags for the events industry, and that content, when we discuss it, is fantastic. So if, as long as you're curating the conversation, then that deserves its own Twitter wall because yes. there are some really good nuggets of information that come out of that. But if you're just hoping that people are going to have an intelligent conversation with a hashtag, it is not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So I think, Bob, you have a very good point, that it's not necessarily for every event, and if you are going to have it up there, have a purpose. Right. Are you going to spend X amount of dollars for something you're just going to hope it works it, uh, itself out? You're not. You're going, to, you're going to need someone that's going to spend some time on it and also give it the energy it deserves. Hoping that, again, you throw something out there and it sticks is not the best way to do it yep. when, you, when you've got a quite big an expense. So that's just my two cents. Thanks, Melissa. Hi, and I'm probably the second worst person to talk about social media. <laughs> but anyway, just to like piggyback on some of the questions, my organization, we actually have a marketing department that kind of handles the Facebook, the tweet. And a lot of people don't have that, you know, staff to handle that, but it'll never replace membership. I Definitely. mean, I think what we've seen um, our social media stuff do is connect people more, actually, on our Facebook um, and, and our And educate tweets. them and, and update them. Yep, yep and, and let them know what's going on, not only in their own little world, but, uh, you know, areas across the country. I do a nursing organization, so Facebook is... Huge. You'll never get rid of that face-to-face -face networking. Uh -huh. That'll never, ever go away. Um, but I think it just keeps them more connected to the association. Um, and the other thing was, uh, you have to, like, you have to educate them along the way. I can tell you the first year we started with Facebook and some of our, there was hardly anybody on there this past conference because we do it, like, year-round. We yeah, saw such an explosion, you know, and people really wanting to get involved. And with the tweet thing, you know, I know I don't care about what other people tweet about, but we have several sessions going on at one time. So someone would tweet about a session, hey, I'm in this and session. And switch to looking that. Looking at a great, yeah. And they may switch or, you know, we also offer our sessions available to purchase um, or they can get it free. And it would, you know, provoke them to go on and, and listen to that other session where as if someone hadn't tweeted that, they may not have done that. Right. You know, so that's just, you know, but like, and I just wanted to add, like, so we do it year round. So it's not just conference related. We do our association year rounds. Perfect. So we're going to wrap it. Well, we got one yeah, last. Can I ask one question? And um, is it possible that because of this uh, interest and in the depth of the approach that people are taking on social media, it's the, it's the new deal, obviously. You can tell by the color of my hair that I don't know much about it, but I kind of wonder if it doesn't make us, uh, on the planning side, rethink strategy at, on, on the old snail mail and the old traditional ways of marketing, almost almost make you think more about those traditional because of, of the robustness of the new technology and right. what you can do. I wonder if it makes us think about how we can use the the uh, methodology that worked for, for the older folks 
uh, maybe rethink that and figure out new ways to, to penetrate uh, those folks too as a result of being so involved in creating strategies with, uh, with social media. I definitely think you can't discount some of the traditional approaches, but a lot of people I know may feel frustrated after they take out a print ad and they really can't gauge the success and they just feel like it was an advertising spent in vain. But I mean, again, I've seen some interesting things that could tie back your social media efforts using traditional media. I saw this one, I think this was in Europe, in London actually, that this guy who couldn't get a job, he actually took out a billboard with his Twitter handle and put his URL, like my resume here, and he got like four job offers off of that billboard. Melissa? One thing I also want to say is that, and what we haven't heard today is research, is asking your attendees, where are you? What are you doing? All your membership. So hoping mm -hmm. that they're all going to be on Twitter, they may not be. So why right. spend that effort? Yes, right. you need to the own media. the space because someone else may come in and own it for you, but you really need to research. So just ask the question, where are you? What are you doing? And what information do you want to find out from us? Simple. So you know where to focus your initiatives. Thanks, Melissa. Hi, what I've found, and we're in publishing as well as running trade shows, as many people are, that I have joined a network where it ends up being a battle with my competitor. Because I find that people on the network are saying they have better ad rates than, than them, and it's back and wow. forth. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so there's some negative aspects of it, which I'd like to explore how to stop that thing. And also, what we have learned as a trade show, you know, we have attrition with hotel rooms, and then you get people on the network saying, you know, you could stay at Circus Circus for seven dollars a night. You know, and then you, then you run into attrition. Yeah. So, you know, part of it is negative, which gives me a fear of joining a seat. Second question I have is I have joined Foursquare with, and my battery is going dead. So oh, you got to char charge up at the power station. <laughs> That's all, thanks. You know, um, what's interesting is, Social media is not a choice for us. It's a, it's a moving train. And it's marketing in parallel universes. Um, you're having your on-site community and then your off-site community. And to the question about our membership, we are the content providers. And these are big megaphones of instruments mm -hmm. to help us get this out. You know, one thing we've talked about is there's a lot of influencers out there, um, publications, uh, bloggers, speakers and then we prep them prior to going on site right. because they're the best marketers around and the goal overall is to create this excitement and critical mass and so anyway I just wanted to I love that that's great input tap into those speakers if you're paying them get them to do some a little extra work right hi I, I want to preface this by saying this isn't um, ageism, but I'm going to generalize a little bit. Our membership, we are um, independently owned lumber and building materials retailers. Very, um, um, probably the average age is in upper 50s, early 60s. Overall, very reluctant to embrace technology altogether. I mean, we have members, you wouldn't believe the number of faxes we still get for wow. registration. We have members without email addresses. At the same time, we are trying to attract younger members to get more involved. We do have a young lumber executives organization that's working on this, but we're having a difficult time convincing the people who traditionally come to our convention why their up and comers need to come. And they don't, they're not really interested because we're not you know, we're not on that bandwagon yet. Right. We did a, we did a um, interactive floor plan map and um, our committee's like, are you still gonna have the signs next year, you know? <laughs> because we need the signs. And it's like, 
well, you know, we're trying to take baby steps to mm -hmm. integrate technology because we want to draw um, younger uh, people to the convention, but we're having this stuff there and no one's using it or embracing it because they're not there. So I, I just, I, I'm curious what you would think would be a good starting point. So um, have you integrated like a tech bar or a social media lounge at your trade show to kind of educate them, to ease them into it? And I've done this with other organizations where they had the same, similar demographic to what you're explaining. And what they did was they had an entire space that was kind of like the genius bar where they actually come and they learn how to use the app. So, you know, it's promoting like that baby steps approach where let's get them to learn how to use the app first. They come to this tech bar. We do that introductory seminar on here's the app, here how, here's how it works, kind of do that same little iPhone tutorial, show them, do one-on-one -on -one questions with them, and then also have that space throughout the conference where they're learning these introductory courses on how to use it and maybe start there, get their feedback after the conference is done, and just hopefully it will work because, I mean, it is the future and you want to right. get them yeah. going into it because I know some of these tools also help save money Mm -hmm. on some of the traditional eventually but we're um you know we're having the difficulty in bringing the stuff in at a cost and not right. being able to return on our on investment or yeah. a sponsor's investment because we've done sponsored charging stations and th they weren't sold we did s have an internet lounge at our last convention which was used and it was sold um but it's not a resell because right. we can't it just did not get that much attention. But right. um, we are um, moving those things closer to our booth, and mm -hmm. perhaps it's a marketing thing where, you know, they visit our booth, but they get the tutorial on the app or the. Yeah, so I mean that's good idea. the first baby step to get them integrated. But great question. We have an organization that's part of ours called the, um, the Northeastern Young Lumber Executives. That's a good idea. Sorry, we were, I was asking if she has a Young Professionals Committee, which she has a, a Young Professionals Group that could come, but um, if you're looking to engage younger people in your events, you want to go to the people that are currently finding value in it, and then making them feel special and asking them to be part of something bigger. So engaging them by bringing them to the meeting, if that's giving them a discount or giving them a specific um, task within the program, and then maybe holding a round table session for people to come in or a lounge area that just is, you don't have to have it sponsored, you can just have tables mm -hmm. and chairs and say, come meet your young professional, you know, tech savvy gurus that are, understand our industry and understand how to engage. Yeah, so keeping that momentum has been successful for our industry, the trade show industry. That would, that would be a suggestion. Great input, Lauren. Well, thank you, everybody. This has been an amazing experience. Thank you to Richard and Richard and the entire Shepherd team. I hope we unlocked some of those social media hesitations you had this morning. Thank you very much. We have a great day. Fantastic. Thank you.